Hey, what's up? It's Andrew here from Offshore Audio, helping you guys to mix better live events, whether that's corporate events, gigs, church sound, you name it. We've got tips and tricks to help you out. So this time we're going to take a look at using the auto mixer. If you're mixing multiple voices, like I said, whether that's corporate events, speeches, panel conversations, church sermons, you name it, this is invaluable. It basically does a job for you. If you'd like to get more tips and tricks like this one, please subscribe to the channel, click the subscribe button down below. You'll find loads more videos that help you out. But without further ado, let's dive in. Auto Mixer is one of the best tools that you're ever gonna find if you're mixing speech content, like conferences, debates, anything like that, anything with more than one vocal microphone. It's incredible. It does your job for you. It controls feedback, it controls levels, it's the best. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how you set it up on this Yamaha QL1 console. Should be the same for other Yamahas in the QL CL series. And it's quite a similar process to a lot of other consoles. I know that Midas Pro series have a similar workflow as well. It's slightly different on M and X32 consoles. On those consoles, you can actually just set the auto mix on the channels themselves. So to set it up on this Yamaha console, we need to sacrifice one of our insert points. If you don't know about insert points, I would advise you to take a look at my workshop, which you can find the first module of free underneath this video. It will help you to understand everything that happens on the stage. The link is down below underneath this video. You will be able to name every single cable, every single thing that you need to plug in, You'll know the ins and outs of why you do everything. You'll know what an insert point is. You'll know why to use an insert instead of a return channel and so on and so forth. It will allow you to mix better live events, whether that's church sound, gigs, conferences, whatever you want to do, it'll make it easier for you. Moving on, we're going to go to our rack, okay? And we're going to sacrifice some of our graphic EQs. Let's be honest, we don't need them if we're doing vocal content quite often. So over here where it says GEQ1 mount, we can touch on that. And down here, we can select the module. And we're going to select an eight channel auto mixer. If you've got more than eight channels of vocals, you could select the 16 channel one. Great, so it's loaded it in place of the first four graphic EQs that we had. What we're going to do now is we're just going to make sure that we are sending our vocal channels into it and then returning them back out to the channels. So we'll click our first channel up here. Just after the GEQ mount, we'll click on our channel one and you can scroll down to select insert to out channel one to channel 32. So you're selecting the insert out of channel one and channel 32. And on our first channel here, I'm going to select channel one. That's this vocal microphone here. My second one here, I'm going to select channel two. You can of course step through these with the plus icons and set up your input channels that way. Now, we see here channel one, channel two, they're going into this mixer. Now we need to make sure that they are going from the right point and returning. So we're just going to head to our home screen. we select selector channel. We have an insert section here, which is turned on and we open it up. It might look like this. And we're going to select over here to make sure it's a post fader send to the insert. It's all on, it's all set up, and it's simple as that. Our second channel, we have done the same. I just have a little bit of music playing on the second channel. So if we go back into our rack, you'll see here that this is playing full volume, the music right now, because I'm not speaking into the microphone. But when I take the microphone here and I speak into it, you'll see that it is automatically turning down the music. Now, a good thing about this is that it's weighted based on the faders and based on the gain level. It's a post fader insert, okay? So when I turn my vocal up, it actually starts turning down the music more. For the purposes of this example, we've got music, right? On channel two, but in the real world, this will all be speech. This will be eight different people who are going on the stage at the same time. So when one of them speaks, it it brings the level of all the rest of them down because they will then be listening. If they're all talking over each other, then it will have to fight with itself a little bit. But in that sense, you battle feedback and you gain more clarity because when one person is speaking, it turns everyone else down or off entirely. And the great thing about the weighting 
of these faders is that if you have a host, someone who is steering the panel del- debate, you know, organizing the panel debate, and they have the last say, you can weight their microphone higher than the rest of them. So that if they speak over panel members, then the panel members will automatically be turned down. So that's an auto mixer, golden, really useful. So I hope you found that one helpful. As you can see, the auto mixer, once you set it up, basically just controls the level of the microphones based on who's speaking. And you can use those faders and your gain, etc., to weight those channels and make sure that, for example, the host has the last say. But I'd love to hear from you now. Please leave me a comment down below and tell me, do you use auto mixers? And if you don't, even better, tell me how you get on without an auto mixer in these situations. Love to hear from you, but until next time, I'll say goodbye.